One of the most important keys to playing good golf or great golf is driving the ball in play. In this video, we're gonna talk about three tips to help you do that more often. All right, I'm with my good buddy, Sean Webb. I'm Mike Renato with Athletic Motion Golf. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. We're gonna give away free swag at the end of every week to the best comment, but you gotta be a subscriber to win. So don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to leave us your comments. Sean, back to the video at hand. We wanna reverse engineer a straight shot, right? So this golf ball doesn't know if it's Sean Webb, Tiger Woods, Roy McIlroy, uh, Lexi Thompson doesn't know, doesn't right? Matter. It only knows a few things, and that's what the club's going to give it. So mm -hmm. the first thing we're going to look at is impact point. Absolutely. How can we tighten up our impact point, or how can we recognize our impact point first? So first of all, I think most golfers that I get during a lesson, they don't even have an, any idea where they're hitting it on the right. club face. And the driver, the way it's designed, if you miss hit it off the sweet spot, it can cause some really drastic curvature on the ball. It can give you some effect. really kind of false cause and effect. Absolutely. If you're on the heel, you're going to see some hard cutting shots. Right. The tail, you might see some hooks. But the swing, per se, path and face may not be causing that. It could be just impact location. So right. I think the first thing to sort out is where you're hitting it on the face. So you can either go to um, CVS or Walgreens or any drugstore mm -hmm. and buy some Dr. Scholl's powdered foot spray, mm -hmm. spray it on the face, and maybe hit 10 shots, mm -hmm. right? And start to look for a pattern, maybe toe, heel, or even all over the face, right. just so you have an idea, first of all, where the contact point is, because that's the first key to hitting the ball in play. Right, be that's exactly right. In the middle of the club. We want to recognize the pattern. That's what we're looking for. If it's, if they're all bunched up together, maybe off the toe, right? That's a pattern. We still want to move it towards the middle, or maybe they're all just scattered all over the face. So maybe a little more work involved in correcting that. But we want to recognize the pattern. Foot spray is a great way to do it. A launch monitor, if you have access to one, is another great way to do it. So, Mike, you know, you you come up, you came up with a, or you've seen um, Scott do a drill even with tour right, players. It seems right. super simple, but he uses it with some of the best players in the world. How can we help center face contact right. without having a launch monitor and, and all some of the stuff that we have? What can they do on the range Sure, to do e that? even the best in the world will get off track sometimes, right? Yeah. Thankfully, that's why we have jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've, when you're at a tournament with these guys, or, or they're, they're here on the weekends or their weeks off, you, you've got to find simple ways for them to kind of get back in track. And I saw Scott do this actually at a tournament. I'm gonna have you set up to it. Mm -hmm. And the player was just not, of course, they're gonna be more consistent with their miss, but he just was not hitting the center of the club face. And of course, you're getting some weird ball flights because of that. So let's set up to it normal. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna frame, we've seen Tiger do this on the putting green with his putter. I'm gonna do the same thing with the driver. I'm gonna frame your driver head with these tees. So now you've got a really old Ooh. school gate to let you know if you miss those tees, you're gonna be very close to the center of the club face. If you start clipping the tees, you're gonna get an idea of what's causing it. And it just something as simple as reaching in your pocket and picking out two tees can make a drastic difference on how well you center impact on your club face. It's a super easy way to go. If your impacts aren't dead center every time, put some tees down and really start to hone in on what's causing it. It's a great way to do it. And that way you're on the range, again, always want to be using feedback. If you're always. hitting balls on the range without feedback, there's a place for that, but most of the time you're just beating balls. You're just practicing. And there's no feedback. You might be getting some good exercise, but you're not really working on anything. Right. We so, want to improve, right? Absolutely. Time's precious. Great way, T-drill, the gate, to work on your sweet spot location and impact location, which is key number one for getting the ball in play. Exactly. All right, so we're getting more impacts now out of the center of the face, right? We're getting that predictable impact spot on the club face. Super important. Now, what determines actually where this ball is going to start? The, where the club face is pointed. Yep. So once you have your impact location basically in the center, which you've been working on, mm -hmm. right? Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> you've got it in the center of the club. Now you can start paying attention to the start line because before it wouldn't make sense to work on the start line because if you are all over the club face, the gear effect is going to actually determine. You're going to move the ball around. All around. Okay. So now that you've got the middle of the face, now we've got a different setup here to actually check the angle of the club face and impact. So we've got just a regular old alignment stick laying right down our target line. And then about, I don't know, five yards in front of that, we've got another alignment stick that's kind of tilted away from the target. So if you hit it, it's not gonna shatter, save you some alignment sticks, right in line. So now we're gonna have a, about a $2 launch monitor. 
Now we're going to know immediately if the face was open or if the face was closed. Absolutely. And there's some uh, data out there of how much the ball is affected by the club face with the driver. I think it's somewhere around 70 to 80 percent. Yeah, it's high. Where the club face is pointed, that's going to be 70 to 80 percent of your right. start line in that range, um, especially if you're hitting in the middle of the face. So if you're hitting balls and you see that the ball is in the middle of the face, but it starts left of that stick, you know that A, you've overturned the face or you had some issues with the um, the release right but somehow or another you know that the face is pointing left when you make contact right so you want to set this station up if you want to be a straight ball hitter no curve you try to hit this stick if you want to have the ball draw you make sure the ball starts right of the stick and you can even place another stick and create a goal post right here so if I'm a drawler I want to eventually get where I'm putting every golf ball through this tight corridor if I'm a fader every ball through this tight corridor and that gives you really tight tolerances to practice mm -hmm. right it doesn't do any good to practice to wide tolerances because they get wider out in the golf course so Absolutely. the more tighter tolerances we can practice to and it doesn't take expensive equipment to do it the better off you're going to be with tuning up and you'll get a really fine sense of what that face is doing if you have some immediate feedback and it's going to really start to tune up we already done the impact location now where that face is pointing is just going to tune you up that next little notch to get more balls out in the fairway and i think once you get a little more advanced you could start putting these together so i would do the face start line and do the t drill absolutely so, so now you've got two things you're working on at once and getting some feedback so and the great thing about that is it frees you the golfer up to make an athletic swing and then you've got feedback down here so you don't have to think you know positions coming down you make your swing boom if it comes off good great if i clip a tee or i clip the stick ah let me re let me recalibrate myself and go back out again. so anything you can do to be athletic and get feedback that's how you want to practice so now we've got key number one impact location yep. on the face key number two where the face is pointed face angle you may have it called Pretty important so we'll be right back with key number three Okay, Mike, we're back with key number three for hitting the ball in play. Right. Number one was impact location on the face. Number two is where the face is pointed mm -hmm. when you make impact. And number three, all interchangeable, obviously, because one can affect the other. They're like three pieces of a puzzle that need to fit together. But you need all three. You need all three, so we're covering all three. The last one is the path of the club as it travels through the impact area. Right, so let's go. We're going to keep our same setup here. And let's say you're out of the center of the club face now. You're hitting the ball. Let's say you want to draw the ball. So you're starting the ball just to the right of our stick, but the ball is curving away from the target line. So it's actually cutting. That's an indication of, well, the ball is always going to curve away from the club path, right? Mm -hmm. So that's an indication of the club path is off. I know the face is pretty good because we're getting our start line. Absolutely. The ball's just curving the wrong direction. So if that's the case, how would you set up our water bottle here? Again, trying to do this as cheaply as possible. So basically, you've got the face at this point open to the club path. Right. Because you're starting a ball in the zone you want it, but it's peeling away. So you have to figure out a way to get the club path basically on the other side of the, of the face That's angle. right. So you need a, a closed face-to-path relationship. Yep. Right? So yep. the club face needs to be a little bit close to the path, not necessarily close to the target line. And there's so a million let's, videos let's, let's out set up about to it. this. Yeah. So if I'm here... And I've got a swing that's a slightly out to in with an open club face. I'm going to get a start line that's to the right, and it peels off even more. Right. So how do we how do we fix this? We've got the water bottle. So we're going to put here. our water bottle on the inside to make sure that that club path's not moving too far left, which is away from the face. Exactly. To encourage the club path to start moving more outside of the club face. Yeah. So you can see how that would affect me if I went this way. I'm going to basically kind of self-organize what I'm doing, yes. right, using some of these external cues. And I'm going to eventually figure out, i got to get this club coming more behind me and get this face turning over a little bit if I want to get a right to left shot that I'm looking for. That's exactly right. So if you have this here and you're still struggling, you could even add another one here possibly. I've, I've, I've done this before with people that need mm -hmm. another cue. You want to, you know, you would clean out or hit, hit this one possibly right. if you came extremely over the top. So this gives you a gate almost to start making some of these swings that would change your club face or club path and hopefully eventually if you're hitting it out of the sweet spot and you have a face that's where you want it pointed now you're hitting that you'll, little draw you're looking you'll for. You'll start to organize it and these are more visual than anything we don't want them so tight 
where you're going to be clipping these bottles. And it's an important point to make. Make sure there's just a little bit of fluid in these bottles. We don't yeah. want to hurt clubs or hurt wrists yeah. or anything. No full water bottles. If you bottles. clip this, it's going to be no big deal. It's just going to fall over. No big deal. But you want the visual, right? You want to be making the athletic motions, but you just want these visual reminders so you can start to feel and start to tune up this stuff and kind of internally rather than trying to move the club, you know, through positions down the swing. Absolutely. And I think you'd be surprised at how where your body and brain start to figure yes. things out when there's things in the way. That's exactly right. Now, if you were starting it the opposite, okay. you would just flip these, right? If you were hooking mm -hmm. it and you needed to, to neutralize it a little more, you would want the club exiting or coming yeah. down a little more over yeah, so that bottle I, and missing I've, this inside. Absolutely. If I've got a hook, I'm probably going to hit both of these bottles. Right. So I need to feel like the path is more left and the face is more open to the path, right. more slice feeling. So I would put these water bottles down, try to miss this one, and then go around to the left of this one and see if I could neutralize that path a little bit. Yep. So, you know, you've got contact on the face. We think that's one of the, the most important keys, especially with the driver. If you're not hitting important. this sweet spot, all bets are off. This ball could go anywhere. There's not really any flat spots on this face. It's all curved in all directions. So you got to be playing out of the middle to have a predictable shot. Absolutely. Now. What you're going to find is, as you work on these keys together, let's say you're still, even though you you worked on the sweet spot drill and, and you worked on some of the club face stuff, you're still having an issue getting it on the face in the right mm -hmm. spot. Once you add in this club path drill, all three of these might link together a little right. bit easier. That's right. So don't get too frustrated with one or the other. Spend 10 minutes on each of these. Yeah, and, it, and it's something we see quite often. This is. This is learning, right? This is training for a better swing. So you've got to allow yourself room to make mistakes. That's how you learn. That's how you learn. So don't get yourself in here. In fact, we use the 80-20 rule all the time. If you can't produce this 80% of the time, then it's too loose, right? Yeah. So we want to be able to allow ourselves some freedom to make mistakes because we're going to learn, we're going to adjust, and the brain's going to start to adapting. So don't be hard on yourself. Go slow at first. Let all these pieces start to puzzle piece together and you're going to be a much better golfer and a much better driver swing for it. Absolutely and, and like he said it right there don't be afraid to slow things down when you're first starting to figure this out make swings at 20 percent and hit balls that way your balls might only go 50 yards with a driver yeah. but you need to slow things down because at full speed your subconscious mind basically just takes over the swing you're going to make your normal pattern right. and nothing's going to change. So let's go back, slow things down, make sure you can make the motion correctly, miss the bottles, hit the sweet spot, and get the face pointed. Once you can do that at a two out of 10, let's say for effort level, right. now crank it up. Now when you get to five and you start missing things again, crank it, let's drop it back let's to a four. Let's drop it back down. So you want to add speed to the good swings, not add speed to a bad swing and try to correct it at speed. So start slow, add speed, until it falls apart, then reel it back in a little bit, and then kind of stair step it. You're gonna get a much faster progression than if you just start full speed, trying to make changes. You're not gonna feel the difference. And it makes so much sense. So many golfers struggle with the driver. They're just out there hacking away with full swings. I don't see one golfer out of 100 doing this kind of no. stuff, but if you can learn from this and start implementing it into your practice, you're gonna drive more balls in play. And not only that, you're gonna hit it longer because you're gonna hit it out the That's center exactly of the sweet right. spot with a more direct uh, impact with the ball instead of these glancing blows That's we exactly see people right. hit. So with the same club head speed, you might add 20 to 30 yards. We see it all the time. All the time just by cleaning up some of this stuff. So that's how you drive the ball in play, and as a bonus, you're gonna hit it longer. Never heard of, never heard of that being an issue with anybody. That won't hurt you longer at all. Longer and straighter.